My name is David Andre and from now on you can use Vectal for free. So let me show you what Vectal is all about because I truly believe that this is what the future of productivity looks like. Let's say you want to create a weekly workout plan. Create a weekly workout plan for me. Create a separate task for each day starting with today. When you send a message in the chat, it goes to our AI agents that analyze your message as well as all of your active tasks that you have as well as your user context. So actually this button right here, the user context, is one of the most important buttons inside of Vectal. In the work description, you describe what you do. In the short term focus, you describe your projects. Long term is your biggest ambitions. And there's sorting preferences here. You put anything else you want our AI agents to have. Then you save the changes and now with every chat message, Vectal takes that information into account. Let's see what happened, right? In about five seconds, we have the tasks created. So today we have a chest day, nice, good way to start. Then tomorrow we have back day, then we have legs day, shoulders day, arms day. From a single prompt, all of these tasks are created. And as you can see, they're automatically recurring every seven days because uh, it's a weekly thing. And the AI agent recognizes that you probably wanna go to the gym regularly, not just once, right? Let's say we've done the onboarding task, right? I'm gonna say archive all of the onboarding tasks. By the way, there's two ways you can interact with tasks, right? From the UI and then from the chat. Basically, the chat agent can do almost everything. As you can see now, boom, it archived all of the onboarding tasks. So all that remains is our workout. So let's say I've been to the gym. We can click that off. Chest day, boom, goes into the future. So if we click on it, you can see, okay, February 15th, seven days from today. So let's say today I want to build a mobile app from scratch, right? I want to create a mobile app today. I've never done it. So help me out. This is a big task. So break it down into seven smaller steps and create tasks for each. So this is just one feature, right? Breaking down bigger tasks into smaller steps. Then once you have your task list, which I highly recommend you putting at least 10 to 15 tasks, that way Vectal can actually have sufficient context. So the more effort you put in, if you actually fill this out, you want to make sure you have you know, high context in all of these. And as you put more words in there, let's say I put more words in there, boom, moderate context. And then I would say high context. So make sure you fill this out. After you do that, Vectal becomes super powerful. And also, by the way, we have all of the three best models, right? So we have Sonnet 3.5, which is the best normal LLM. We have DeepSeq R1, which is the best powerful long reasoning model. And then O3 Mini, which is the best fast reasoning model. Now, if you have Vectal Pro, you get all of these unlimited. So let's say you have your tasks already created. Move all of the app development tasks to today. Once you have your task, you can, for example, toggle deep seek mode, and then you can get started on a specific task. So set up development environment. Help me set up the dev environment. Now the chat is in deep seek mode. By the way, we host deep seek on European and American servers. So none of your data goes to China and you still get unlimited usage if you have Vectal Pro. That's a side note. So now it's finished super fast, as you can see. And you can also see the reasoning tokens, which OpenAI doesn't let you do. So let's say you don't want to see that. You can collapse those and say, okay, let's break down your first task, set up the open environment. And the beauty is that it has context of all the other tasks. And again, let's say you don't want like a long reason and response, O3 Mini might be enough, right? So let's say, okay, choose a platform. Help me choose a platform. And then we run O3 Mini. And you can switch, <laughs> wait a minute, that's in insanely fast. And you can switch between these however you want, right? So Sony 3.5 is great for quick responses. O3 Mini is great for tasks that still need some reasoning, but you need them fast. And the Deep Cigar one is going deep. Let's say you are stuck on something, you really want the models to think about it, you would toggle Deep Cigar one and you can chat in the Deep Seek mode. So here is the main idea behind Vectal. And it is that you need AI agents where you actually do the work. If you want to use ChatGPT, but you have your tasks in Todoist or Notion, you have to switch to a different app, right? Which is problem number one. It's the friction of switching. But the bigger problem is that ChatGPT doesn't have the context of your Notion or of your Todoist or of your calendar for that matter, right? This is where Vectal comes into play. And this is why Vectal will win, frankly. You might say like, oh, okay, David, that's pretty e egotistical, but it's just thinking from first principles. You need AI agents to have the context about you to be useful. In Vectal, we already do offer the best models, right? Claude or ChatGPT don't have any inherent advantage unless they decide in the future not to give models in the API, which is very unlikely since most of the revenues come from the API. But anyways, you need your AI agents to have context on your tasks, on your projects, and on you as a person, right? That's where user context come into play. So the goal is to make Vectal into the ultimate productivity tool where you have your calendar, you have your notes, you have your tasks, in the future maybe email and you know more stuff, and you don't have to switch to different apps to do the tasks, but more importantly, all of the AI agents know the essential context about you so that they can help you as much as possible and save you as much time as possible. Now to show you just how fast Vectal is improving, here is a video from literally five weeks ago, where as you can see, there is no notes, right? So currently we have tasks, we have notes, and also we have O3 Mini and DeepSeek R1. 
that <laughs> there wasn't any Deep Seagar 1 or O3 Mini in this version, which again, five weeks is nothing. We update Vectal like literally every other day, right? Oh, by the way, one small feature is this clear chat button that I added recently. This is just a fast way to reset the chat without having to reload the window. I think Vectal is one of the first companies in the world that's like AI for the software, right? Or at least it's the first startup that was built entirely with AI tools because 99.9% .9 of the code in Vectal was written by Cursor and me just speaking English. Now Cursor is another example of a company that's AI first, right? And these companies, every single sector will win. So let me just draw that, right? Like these are different industries, right? In these industries, you have big incumbents. So like Google for search, right? Let's say like Todoist for tasks. These incumbents will get absolutely destroyed by AI first companies. So in search, it's already happening, right? Perplexity is gaining market share over Google. Also OpenAI as well, right? OpenAI has pretty good search as well. So these are AI first companies that are destroying the incumbents. I want to do the same in the productivity space. And it's not just to do it on Notion. I think Vectal is not trying to be a better to-do list. Vectal is going to be something entirely different because nobody yet knows what the UI for working with AI agents looks like, right? That is an unsolved problem. So I need to invent that solution. And you need to do that by building from the ground up for AI agents. You cannot just add like a widget, like most websites, right? You've, you've seen this countless of times. Most websites look like this and all they do to be AI first is they add like a small chatbot right here, right? Small chatbot into the bottom right corner that everybody hates. It uses some like shitty model. Nobody even knows what it uses. It's not helpful at all. And that's most people's experience with AI. This is not what an AI first company looks like. AI first company starts over. So either these incumbents replace themselves, which a few people will do. I think Notion will adapt. There is companies that, you know, adapt quickly that will do it to themselves. But there's also companies that will not adapt and they will get replaced like Blockbuster got replaced by Netflix. So I think most companies in most industries will get absolutely outcompeted by AI for startups in the next five to 10 years. I think it's gonna be absolute bloodbath on the markets. Another important feature in Vectal I need to mention is keyboard shortcuts. Now, currently there aren't many, but they are super useful. So the main keyboard shortcut is Q. Q lets you create a new item instantly, right? So you can either type to the chat agent to create a new task. You can either click the plus here, or if you're in notes, you can click the plus here. That's the UI way to do it. The fast way to do it is to just press Q. Anywhere in the app, if you press Q, it will bring up this modal. You can type in the name and then context. This is anything extra the AI agents should know. A good habit is to really think about like what is non-obvious about this task or note. Because usually the old way of managing task lists, right? For example, in Todoist is that you just, you just write a name and that's enough because you already know what it's referring to. But the future is with AI agents managing your list, you know, automatically sorting it, organizing it and you doing the high level creative task. What you need to do though is extract that context from your brain. So it's really a good practice to like pause for like three seconds when creating any item and just like add in five to seven words of extra context, right? So let's say buy new shoes. This could be either a really important task or it could be a super low important task, right? Like if you have 20 pairs of shoes already, this is nothing. This is just, you know, consumerism. But if you only have one pair of shoes and, th and they broke down and you have no shoes, then this task is like one of the most important tasks that you have to do because otherwise you have no working shoes. So inside of context, say like, I only have one pair and they just broke down. If you include this, which is like eight words or something, this is a hugely important context that will help the AI agents accurately position this, which will come into place anytime you use the chat agent or anything, right? So make sure to add context to any new item you create. So another keyboard shortcut we have is user context. You can either get there through this button or you can just press S. The last but not least keyboard shortcut is C, which is completed tasks. Again, you can click it either here or press C and this will show you like the 50 most recent completed tasks. So anything you need to see. And if you wanna reactivate something, you can just click here and it will get back on your list. Boom, there it is. Okay, so let me explain notes a bit because that's not like an obvious part, right? The difference between tasks and notes. But I think these pre-filled notes explain it really well. So every time you create a new item, our AI agent, which is the sorting agent, carefully analyzes the item and decides whether it should be a note or a task. So you might have noticed that if you press Q, this is not like a specific to tasks, right? This is an item. I call it an item because it's not yet decided whether it will be a note or a task. So tasks are actionable items something specific, clear that you need to do, right? Buy new shoes, order breakfast, fix the car. Those are tasks. Notes is basically anything else. So an idea you just got in the shower or a random thought you want to write down, a reminder that you want to keep in mind or a quote you like. Basically anything you want to write down, anything you want to remember, 
you want to note down those are notes. Now, if a note is really important, it'll be marked with a dot because notes, just like tasks, have importance. So let's say you, you click this button to edit a note. You can see the importance right here. Now, notes are much simpler than tasks. Obviously, there's like no due dates or anything like that. There's just the name and the context. So if you want to add more to the context, right, you can do that very easily. If you want to add more to the name, you can also do that. But the main thing to know about notes is that they're ordered by the date you created them, right? So from the oldest to the newest. Now, these are some pre-filled ones so that you can see what it looks like, right? But this is like from 1950, Alan Turing created the Turing test. Then we have 2009. Then you have 2024, when Bechtel was born. And then you're going to have your own notes here, starting with today's due date. And as you add new notes, they will group to the date. And they're always sorted by the newest ones. Now, let me show you the user context, because this is what really makes Vectal magical. And a lot of people are tempted to skip this, but it's a huge, huge mistake. So right now we have four different fields. This might change in the future, but basically you need to give the AI agents sufficient context so that they can help you out. So work description, I'm just going to create an imaginary avatar, right? I am a designer working as a freelancer. I specialize in designing web apps and mobile apps specifically. And by the way, have you noticed the context changes from low context to moderate context. So mobile apps specifically focused on SaaS products and AI startups, okay? So now let's say I would, you know, duplicate this, boom, suddenly we're high context. So make sure to hit high context in every field of these four. So for work description, just describe what you do and like what matters in your job, right? Then short and focus is your projects. So I would say my main project is a client that has a new AI startup that needs a mobile app designed. Currently, they only have a web app. Long-term goals, you would say like, what do you want to achieve in life? Whether it's personally, whether it's professionally, you know, fitness goals, money goals, like family, whatever you would put it in here. That way, the AI agents have that context when sorting your task. Otherwise, they cannot know what's important to you if you don't Tell them. Now, sorting preferences, this one is more freestyle. Here you should put anything and everything that doesn't fit into the other three, right? The reason is named sorting preferences is like, how do you want your tasks to be sorted? So like, I want tasks that are actionable to have 80 plus importance. By the way, maybe I should explain that. Every task and node gets assigned an importance. If it's not important, it will be like close to zero. If it is very important, it'll be close to 100. So zero to 100, this is decided by the sorting agent in our backend. But of course, if you want to change it, you can do that yourself very easily. So once you fill out the user context, then Vectal really starts to shine. For example, if you enable DeepSeek R1, which again, the paid users have unlimited access to, you can ask it, help me execute the UI UX task. I have no clue what design to go for. And let's say I am working for a new client that has an AI habit tracker. Okay. It's a random example. But now look at the reasoning. So you can see the actual reasoning tokens inside of DeepSeek, which OpenAI doesn't let you do. But here you can see how it's going to be relevant to you, right? First, I should consider their specialization in SaaS and AI startup. This is not mentioned in here at all, but it's mentioned in our user context. So the AI agents will tailor their responses specific to you. Because if you just do a generic response, it might be useful to you, might be relevant to you, or might not be. But if you do it inside of Vectal and you really created like 15, 20 tasks, and you really filled out the user context, you will notice the AI agents are much, much more useful and powerful. And this is especially obvious in deep seek mode because it's a reasoning model. So it really spends that extra time thinking about the request. And as you can see, even the very first sentence, the user is a freelance designer working on UI US task. So even from the beginning, it's on the right track. So yeah, when I say context matters, it really does matter. Now in deep seek mode, you can collapse the thinking part. So you can only see the final response if you want to. But a lot of people like to see the reasoning part and how, how the model thinks about your prompts. And again, if you want to switch from deep seek mode to, let's say, O3 mini mode, you can do that very easily. And you can say, list out all tasks we have overdue. By the way, this is the red dot. Uh, maybe this will change. I don't know. But the red dot signals a task is overdue. That way you can easily see that. Okay, so there it is. As you can see, O3 mini is insanely fast. So from the moment we get the response, you can see right away, basically, it's like, it's, it's crazy fast. So yeah, this is Vectal and now you can use it for free. So make sure to go to Vectal.ai and give it a shot. I promise you won't regret it.